Yes, welcome back everyone. Next session. So his spirit animal is a koala. <laughs> his role model is uh, Simon Sinek. His style, casual, flexible, and grumpy. <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote this down himself, so. <laughs> uh, and a dream, a digitally connected world. Uh, please welcome Shaya Pumiza from uh, Atida. <laughs> and remember uh, to get your questions. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, get your questions in. Uh, we're going to ask them uh, afterwards. Sure. Good luck. So, uh, first of all, big, well, uh, big thank you to Spryker to having me in this state. So, uh, I've been here since yesterday, and it's been a really, really, really great event so far. So, thank you all. Thank you all the people who are coordinating, and um, so basically the whole Spryker team. Uh, my presentation today is about ATDA, but. I can bet no one here heard any word about ATDA. So that, that's actually a good opportunity for me, so I can tell whatever I want, so you cannot really judge it's right or wrong. That's a good part. But let's start from a question, with a question. So who has bought any pharmacy product online? Wow. Real medicine or just like over-the-counter product or like beauty and personal care? Ibuprofen, okay. So that <laughs> I was expecting no, but, but that's already good. So uh, yeah, Etida is trying to basically create an online pharmacy. And when we are talking about online pharmacy, it's, it's pretty futuristic. And we believe the future of healthcare and online pharmacy is really, really, really personal. And what does it mean? So what does it mean to have very, very personal healthcare. So we are collecting data. We are living in a world which is everyone wanted to do a digital transformation. I think most of you have been impacted by COVID, so whether positively or negatively. But interestingly enough, at ATIDA, we've got two impacts from COVID. So one from digital industry and the second from healthcare. So that was basically nice opportunity for us to, to be really in this market, to be really vis uh, visible in this market. So basically, we, we, to, to be very honest, so we started this business right before COVID. So it was not because of COVID, but COVID was actually a boost for our business. Um, after COVID, so the prediction says by 2025, the growth of online pharmacy is going to be uh, around 25%, and it used to be 2.5%. So it's 10 times more just because of the uh, pandemic that we've all experienced. And a spoiler alert, in Germany, by the end of this year, online pharmacy and online prescription is going to be mandatory. So all the doctors, all the GPs have to issue a prescription. Anyone know what is a prescription? Anyone can imagine what is a prescription? It's a QR code. So basically, you get your QR code on paper. That's the fun part. So you are not really doing things in a very environmental friendly, but it's still a bit better. So you scan that QR code. The QR code says what is actually inside your prescription. And then you send it to your local pharmacy or online pharmacy of your choice. If it's local and brick and mortal, then you go there, you pick up your medicine, if it's online, you will receive it uh, at basically at the place that you want. But we are talking about online pharmacy, we are talking about the future of health, we are talking about data, we are talking about digital world. So our mission, our ambition is basically to move that industry from pretty curative and reactive market to very proactive and preventive market. So we wanted to have advice for people. We wanted to be more like your, something not necessarily like your uh, brick and mortal or lo your local pharmacy, but something between your GP and your uh, local pharmacy, who knows you very well, who can predict things for you, who can really help you to, to basically pursue your healthy life. And everyone has a different need. Everyone has a different 
basically uh, requirement, and that's how we can do with the data. But before, before really jumping into that, let me just explain some numbers. Maybe th these are pretty boring, but, but this is the, uh, the context that we are basically operating in. So our vision is to become number one pan-European online pharmacy by 2025. And that's our goal. And our sub-goal, or the current milestone, is become number one beauty and, her and personal care provider by the end of this year in Europe. Currently, uh, you can see how, uh, the offices that we have over there, the logistics centers that we have. And um, so let me go to the next slide. Yes. So to date, we are over 20 million orders. We are actually operating with 20 million orders. And just think about a small business that started from a bit just before pandemic. And then you can now understand the impact of pandemic. And now you can understand why I said it had two impacts on us, both on online digital market and on healthcare domain. We have around 5 million active customers in our platform, and we are not active in, yet in many countries, so we are just launching our platform in many countries. Um, there is no very precise stat about number of employees that we have, but we are over 700 people, so that's for sure. Um, the number of years that we are really operating is 16, and you might ask me why 16. So I'm, I'm always talking about two years, three years, four years. So what, what, how come that 16 comes? And that's basically the the sum of all the online pharmacies that we are acquiring. And yes, that's how we grow our business. So based on we acquire like number one, number two online pharmacies in different countries, and we try to combine them all into one single platform. So currently, at the time, we've got nine offices around the Europe, and we are operating in nine countries, and we are testing in 11 more countries in the Europe. So in total, we are active in around 20 uh, European countries. And these are our brands. So as I said, we acquire businesses around the Europe. So right now, uh, we have two brands in Spain. Um, basically, that makes us number one in Spain. So we have Dos Forma and Mi Forma in Spain. We have E Forma in Italy. We have Sante Discount in France, uh, which is the biggest online pharmacy in France. Uh, we've got three brands in, in the Germany. So uh, in Spormet, Delmet, and Pharma Hero. Those are the three brands that we have in Germany. And then at the bottom, you can see Atida platform and Atida Pure. And Atida platform is basically the platform that we create and we migrate the brands into that. And that's basically the platform that we are creating with the Spryker. The rest are legacy. And that's the real challenge. I have this boring slide as well, which I'm not really a big fan of that. But the main reason that I put it here is because of it, it just, it's more like for the sales pitch and those kind of things. We, uh, we have more than 150 uh, private label products, and we have uh, ATD Pure, which is more like your personal supplements and vitamin provider. But the main reason that I, I put it here is because we try to make that very personalized. So whenever we see there is a gap in the market, we try to produce a product to make sure that we are filling the gap. And that's the, main, that's the only reason that I put this slide in. So forget about all the sales pitch. That's the reason. But let's take a look at the platform that we are building. This is more like look and feel of the platform. So we try to create, again, like very calm and smooth customer journey. And that's very, very important in online pharmacy. So you can see there are multiple things there. Today. We've heard a lot about app composition platform, if I remember correctly, uh, that Spryker is trying to provide. And that's actually, I can easily say, that's the future of e-commerce. So there, there's going to be no big player in the e-commerce who wanted to have everything in a monolithic system. That's not the future of e-commerce. Of course. If you, if you wanted to kick a start, then that's totally fine. If you want to scale and grow, that's not going to happen. 
So you need to select best of the breed. You need to select products from different, basically, technology provider. Let's take a look at this. So um, we have, for example, a series of different services here in this picture. So you can see the pictures are coming from a digital asset manager provider. That's the service that we are using. The next bit is rating and review. The next bit is pricing. So you can see the price through the structure prices and the real prices. The next bit is promotion. So you can see 20% promotion. And the next bit is actually availability. So you see the add to basket button is enabled. So that's why it's available. So all of those basically works together. And all of those are different services. And that's how e-commerce basically works. And this is the next one, actually, not this. Yes. This is my favorite slide. That's how our technology providers come to picture all together. So we have plenty of different technology providers. And, and this is just an example, to be honest. So it's much more than this. Much, much, much more than this. We use Spryker as a heart of our system. It's a transactional system. I think it's fair to just repeat what Boris said in the morning. It's for sophisticated cases and transactional cases. And we have a lot of different technology providers around that. And all of them work together with different cloud providers to have a very scalable solution for us. And the question is, why we've chosen Spryker so far? And are we happy with that? Let me just touch on that one. We wanted to have a headless commerce engine. I, I, don't, I think I don't need to really say to this room why we need that, because all of you are, you are here, probably you've chosen Spryker because of that reason. So we wanted to scale easy. That's, that's the key in a business for us. That's the most important key in a, in a business when you are scaling dramatically like us in two years from one employee to 700. So you want it to scale. And that's why you want it to decompose things as much as possible. You want it to have a flexibility. So we've heard that many people have already chosen Spryker because of the flexibility. And yes, when you are doing headless, it's definitely much more flexible. We want it to, have to provide from omni-channel. We want it to deliver things via different devices. So think about IoT. Think about different devices. Think about your smartwatch. We wanted to make sure that we can connect all the data points nicely together. And enhance security and privacy. When we are talking about pharmacy, we are talking about the patient, the security is definitely, definitely, definitely much, much, much more important than normal e-commerce businesses. And that's one of the things that you definitely need with the headless commerce, because you can tweak that such that you get the best security out of that. But if you remember my slide with all the technology provider, then the question is how we integrate that. So basically, when we started this project, we didn't have ACP, so App Composition Platform. And we had to create that. And of course, we achieved that through microservices. And again, why microservice? Everyone probably knows in this room. The biggest, biggest, biggest reason is because we wanted to have rapid development. We wanted to have a small chunks. We wanted to have flexibility, scalability again, high maintenance. And probably for us, one of the most important thing, if a microservice is not so critical, we can easily outsource. If microservice is pretty critical, we can basically create a business area around that, and then a team will own that business area. And I'm talking about the team. So that's that's very, very, very important aspect for us, because that's how, basically, we've managed to get to 700 people. Because at the beginning, we had one rule, think agile. Otherwise, we are going to fail badly. So we put, from day zero, we put these seven principles to, to create the team, not only to grow the team, but to create the team. 
And the first one was, and every team should follow these seven principles. I think everyone has seen Agile Manifesto and those kind of things, but this is real. So we are actually following that. We wanted to understand our customer needs and not what they want. That's very interesting because if you remember the three questions from Chris in the morning, so he said, what do you want? What do you really need? And are you ready? And that's exactly, you can see that here as well. So we wanted to understand them, understand what they need, and not necessarily what they want. We always adapt to the problem without any hierarchy in the problem solving. So when something is wrong, we don't care what's your role, what's, what's the hierarchy. We try to solve that problem. And whoever solves it first, perfect. We are mobile first. We are adaptive and fast. And why? Back to how a prescription will look like, you have a QR code. So who wants to scan the QR code with the laptop? It has to be on mobile. That's not a nice to have. It's, it's a hard requirement. It has to be on mobile. And security and privacy, again, I mean, it's not enough to emphasize on that on the, on the medical domain. So patient profile, patient information, patient data. Everyone knows about GDPR, but patient profile is very, very, very above that. So if you have any breach on the, on the customer data, then you get a penalty. If you have a breach on patient data, then you are in the jail. So that's as hard as that. And we wanted to have small tasks to make sure that we have independent deployment, for example. Small task makes us more agile. Small tax tasks makes us very, very, very dynamic. And we engineer for scale. Whatever we do, we think how we can scale that. From day zero, we always think how we can scale that. And the last one, but probably the most important one, have fun. Pharmacy by nature is not really a fun thing, but we always try to make sure that in everything we do, we have fun. So I'm just going to end this presentation with the AT does value. And those principles are actually, you can see that here as well. So we wanted to, have, to make sure that we have fun in everything that we do as, as a company and for our people. So we have to give back the things in the community that we are living, we have to give it back to the community. We always look for curious and courageous owners. We always have to be ethical. We are pharmacy, we need to be ethical. We need to empathy, and we need to be very humble and honest. And basically, that's how we are at ATIDO. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Yeah. Very good. Um, Shaya, I have yes. a question. Um, can you tell the audience what Atida actually means? Ooh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting one. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Atida is an Hebrew word, so, and it means future. So basically, uh, th this, this is more like a common name in the pharmacy domain, so you always try to be like futuristic and those kind of things. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, ATITA is a Hebrew word. I have to check, double check, but I think it's a Hebrew word, and that means future. And that's actually very, very, very clear in things that we are doing as well. So if you see that, if you think why we've chosen a striker because of the future. So everything is really about the future at, uh, at ATITA. Uh, Same as the name. Yeah. Uh, before I ask a, another question from the from the audience, I have a, a question that I really want to ask you because yeah, sure. it, it really uh, struck with me, and that's something that you said. So Spryka is at the heart of what you do and other best of breed technologies. So how do you select your partners? And that would be the the first part of the question. And how does this integration process work for you? Oh, that's that's again a very interesting one. So the big so so let, let, let's let's just start with the easy answer. There are two factors in selecting partner. Of course, added value and content, and the second is culture. So that's very important. And and I would 
even say the order is other way around. So if we see a partner has a right culture that fits with our culture, so that's already like a first check mark. And then we check whether the added value that we get from that partner is up to par. Because we are a growing uh, company, so we are really at the scale. And, um, and, and to be honest, we've been hit by, by the partners. With, we, um, basically, we had like a, kind of like a mismatch in culture. And it was really, really, really not a nice experience. And then other way around, so there were a lot of partners that their technology was not at the point that we wanted to have. But the culture was right, so we saw that, okay, so that's basically a right direction for us. Because at the end of the day, I think we've heard that probably 10 times today, technology is, a, is an enabler for us, for everyone. So technology is not the only reason that you've uh, you go for a partner. So I'd, I would even say culture is the biggest, biggest, biggest factor for us to select a right partner. Do you also happen to have, uh, speaking about culture, do you also happen to have um, like African antelopes in your culture? Is that a thing uh, that you... <laughs> <laughs> we have every kind of culture, yes. And, nice. uh, but but th that's actually very interesting. So uh, if I, yeah, I, I think I have a few minutes. So if, if one asks me what's the biggest challenge that we face in, in terms of the migration of those brands into Etida, again, I would say culture. Because people saw it was really the biggest one. So for people, it was totally new way of working. For, for the tech. So basically, we created this nice technology stack. And then just think about, for example, um, Sante Discount, one of, one of our brands. So they are in operation for five years. So many people, on, for example, on the operation side, on warehouse, on, on accounting, on finance, they were using totally different systems. And now, in one night, they need to change and switch. And that was a very, very, very big change for them. So, and at the beginning, we had this crazy idea that let's make it templated and like again, like an agile way. So start with small and, and iterate on that. And we realized that that's not going to work for every company because every company has a different culture. Again, a human element and people saw it made it a bit more complex. And actually, that's 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 the real challenge that we have. And but. On the other side, that's a fun challenge, so because you are really interacting with people. So you, re you start to understand what they need, and then basically we create that migration journey for each, uh, each of our brand totally differently. So it's a customized migration journey for each brand. Nice. Do we have any questions from the audience right here? Which I cannot see. I just see or online? Somebody says <laughs> Oh, there's, there's a question a over there, yeah. Wait, let's see how I can get there. Just climb over the chairs, that's fine. Yes, sure. <laughs> you have seen how short I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, where is the question? There you go. What's been the biggest challenge uh, you faced when integrating Spryker within all your systems? Integration? Uh, so, uh, like, like integration is the biggest <laughs> challenge. So, when when you are when you wanted to have uh, all of those partners together, because the data that is produced by each of this system needs to be transformed to to be consumed by the other system, and then the probably the the follow up question is how we overcome that challenge. Exactly. And uh, basically, we realize that we need to follow very asynchronous pattern in the transform data transformation. So we used a lot of queuing mechanism before each of integration. And in the queuing mechanism, so we create like a contract between each system. So in the contract, we said that, OK, so this is how I'm producing the data, and this is how I'm consuming the data. And if your data is not following that contract, basically, uh, the integration won't happen. So that, that I that just guarantee that you won't have mismatch on the data side. And at, but creating that contract will take time, because you need to understand exact uh, data schema that you are transferring between the systems. So, so that's basically uh, the hard part. But as soon as you have the right contract in place, and, and your contract needs to be flexible, so that's also one of the learning points, because we had like a very strict contract, and that was, that was a disaster as well. So, but as soon as we, we find the right balance between the flexibility and the contract, then we were able to con uh, connect all of those systems together very easily. And, and we just continued that using that contract. Thanks. 
Any more audience questions? So we have a couple of minutes left. Otherwise, I have a question from the virtual audience. Yeah. And, and one of the, that question is maybe because you're coming from pharma, um, we know that data structure in pharma is one of the biggest complexities or has the biggest complexity. So how do you handle complexity? Uh, that, that's actually a pretty interesting one as well because we are also um, basically um, cross-ship product from different countries as well, and that adds to that complexity. So, for example, uh, and in pharma, we have rules and regulation. So we have more rules and regulation than normal retail. Um, we have a Dutch pharmacy, which is actually located in the Netherlands, and we have to ship product uh, prescription medicine product to Germany. So in that case, we have to follow both Dutch rules and German rules as well. And that makes it very, very hard. So to basically overcome that complexity, we always, so one easy answer is using microservices, but the true answer is these are all the rules that we adapt and we customize, for example, a Spryker to basically create that rule engine on top of a Spryker to make sure that um, we are dealing with that, that complexity. But that complexity is pretty customized, so it's not really easy to create one rule engine and apply it to different countries. So it's very, very, very country specific. Are, are there any movements going on to try to centralize it, like at least in Europe? Um, as far as I know, there is no actual movement. So there yeah. are, on, on paper, yes, at the at European Union, yes. But in reality, that's not going to happen because that's one of the, let's say, and areas that people do not want to enter because that's pretty critical. So it's patient data. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. I think we're uh, done with questions, right? Yeah. Yes, we are. Shaya, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. You, so much. you. You look uh, so. Uh, you were here yesterday at, uh, at the customer day. Uh, here today at, at, at Excite. So you look like a person that goes to conferences, right? I do <laughs> go to conference a lot. <laughs> yes. So we have a conference back here. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Hi, you. I thought it was amazing. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you.